Welcome to the channel, human. Click that subscribe button. If you've been on this channel for any good length of time, you know that I love action and martial arts films. I've been watching action and martial arts movies since I was a kid. When it comes to the big names that you associate with action movies and martial arts movies, I know all of them and I have seen their movies, even the smaller guys, the smaller gals, you know, I've seen their stuff. I am all over those two genres. So, of course, when Expendables 1 came out, I went to the theater, saw that multiple times. Same thing with 2, same thing with 3. I own the movies, so I am excited to get into this particular review, especially since I got invited to an early screening for this movie, which is fantastic. Sometimes in life, your boy gets good things. So let's dive into this. The opening scene for this movie, right out the gate, was badass with my boy Eco Uwais from the Raid movies. If you haven't seen the Raid Redemption and the Raid 2, like if you haven't seen those movies, you need to check those out. Especially if you call yourself a fan of action movies, a fan of martial arts movies. Those Raid movies are a must see. But starting this movie off with Eco kicking ass and taking names was absolutely fantastic i was cheering my ass off as was everybody else in the screening luckily i was at a screening and all the seats were full especially the ones in the front they were all full okay there were a couple of humans sitting on the aisles that's a great thing dangerous but it's a great thing and yes you're wondering you're wondering who is the main villain of this movie it's eco. That's awesome, right? Because when you think about all these badass characters, like who are they going to fight? I mean, the team is so badass. You have to have someone that is convincing as a threat, as a villain. You remember in the first movie, we had Eric Roberts and Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? And then in the second movie, we had uh, Scott Atkins and John Claw Van Damme. And this time we got eco. You waste, right? So the guy from the Raid movies is the villain. I was like, this team got their work cut out for him because he is so badass that he can take on multiple members of the Expendables and that shit be believable. And I'm like, they might lose this particular fight. Megan Fox is in this movie. And that shit was still weird watching her throughout the film because I'm like, she doesn't belong in a movie like this. I don't care... That she was in a couple of action movies to me. She is eye candy and nothing else. And she is also a terrible actress on top of that. So to me her as an action star was laughable. Not believable. Couldn't take it seriously at all. I was just waiting for her to get fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like to have some sort of sex scene. To me those are the kinds of scenes that you would expect with Megan Fox. A sex scene. For her to be a love interest, not so much shooting a gun and kicking ass and stuff. That shit didn't work for me. But moving on to something else. The pacing of this movie. The movie is very fast paced. You don't have too many slow moments. The movie just keeps moving and moving from the opening throughout. It just keeps going and going and going. And for those of you that like that kind of stuff, I think you'll dig this. But you got to keep this in mind when you go to see this movie. Or when you watch it. Think about these things going into the movie. What you like about the franchise. And what you dislike about the franchise. And then once you watch this film. Do you think. Like think to yourself. Is there more of what I like. Or more of what I dislike. So keep that in mind. On a scale from 1 to 10. 1 being horseshit on a hot. Smelly as day and 10 being mind-blowingly amazing. I'm going to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. Really solid movie. Very bloody, very violent. Exactly the kind of stuff that you want to see in an Expendables film. Specifically like the first two. Because even though I like the third installment, that shit was made for families. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers with kids. The Expendables... Is not meant for kids. That's why that third movie was a large misstep. Stallone, he acknowledged that. The rest of the cast acknowledged that. You don't need to water down Expendables. 
You know what I'm saying? You don't ever need to do that shit, especially considering that the first two movies, when they came out, they were number one at the box office. So there's no reason to mess with the formula. If it ain't broke, you don't need to fix that shit. So it's cool to have a course correction. I think the story for the third movie is slightly better than four, but four feels more like what you would get with the Expendables films, like especially in relation to the first two movies. Uh, 50 Cent in this movie, he was bearable, didn't really like him, didn't really hate him, I'm just like, you could have found somebody else better to, to put in an Expendables movie, um, Eco was amazing, Megan Fox, you know, she looked good, and I thought about fucking her the whole time, but other than that, you can miss me with Megan Fox in this movie, Tony Ja is already like a martial arts legend, even though he doesn't have a large catalog of movies, where everybody knows what he's done, right? You know, he got like the Ong Bok, uh, the Protector, right? You know, but everything else, like he really didn't become the star that he should have been. And I feel like that's due to the individuals that were around him. You know, maybe they weren't telling him the right stuff to go for. And uh, at least you still have individuals smart enough to utilize his talents. But I feel like Tony Ja should be way bigger than he currently is. So shout out to him. He was cool in this movie. So Tony and Eco were awesome. Uh, you get some awesome bloody action. And then like I said with the story, the, the story for three is a little better. But, you know, this one is still kind of cool for what it is. And uh, basically what you have here with the story is Eco being the main villain of the movie. He has his own private army. And he stole a bunch of detonators for nuclear missiles. And the Expendables, they're tasked with whooping his ass and stopping his plans. That's what the story is. Very simple, very familiar. But the execution of it was good enough for the type of movie that this is. And the standouts in this movie, you got three standouts. Jason Statham, Tony Ja, and Eco Uwais. Everybody else was fine. They was alright. Megan Fox, trash. But everybody else was fine and they did what they were supposed to do. If they make another Expendables movie, I'm definitely going to watch it because I do love this franchise. And I think that each movie has something to offer. In the third movie, the cast was really good. But the way that they watered it down and made it for families and shit, that's not the way to go. Keep Expendables R-rated. Not everything is meant for fucking families. Some shit is just meant for mature audiences, for adults. You leave them kids at home, tell them to take a nap, get a babysitter or something. Not everything is meant for family, families and kids. But if you liked the first three films, or if you liked the first two, then give this one a shot. See how you feel. And then you can let me know who your top three favorite characters in this movie uh, is. Because, you know, for some of you, you might like a lot of characters. For some of you, you might just like a few. But let me know your top three favorite characters in Expendables 4. And then let me know your top five favorite characters overall in the whole franchise. Now that's going to be a hard one right there, but do your best to let me know. I appreciate you being here, human. And until next time, Terrence out.